Joining us next is Diego Berchtold, who works and lives at the crossroads of crypto and sports. He's the founder of Cryptocurrency Consulting, LTD, a Switzerland-based consultancy, and also a professional football player at FC Lausanne Sport, playing in the Swiss Super League, the top-tier football league in Switzerland. So, hello together. My name is Diego Berchtold. I'm from uh, Switzerland and uh, I'm 21 years old. I came to blockchain like uh, one and a half year ago, starting to invest into cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. And the first thing that I really thought was, what is the power behind those cryptocurrencies? So what does it mean that something has that power that can take like a profit from a thousand percent in one year. What's behind this hype? And so I went a little bit deeper in it. And that's the moment where actually I went into the blockchain area and went into the blockchain business. So like one year ago, I started to do some consulting business to start my consulting business in the blockchain, in the cryptocurrency area. I started to work with, uh, with, private investors, with also the first uh, agencies, with the first, uh, I started doing the first corporations. Right now I'm doing the consulting for uh, Swissborg, which is actually the biggest Swiss uh, ICO of the year. They just uh, had their ICO back in January with uh, 50 millions collected at the end. So that's, that's the kind what I'm doing actually in the blockchain. The other side I can talk about myself is the, the, the sports area. That means the, the football. I'm playing since I'm like uh, six years old. I started playing at a local team as uh, anybody starts at all. And for this year, this was my first uh, year as a professional footballer in the highest league of uh, Switzerland. So I'm pretty, pretty, pretty uh, happy about that because it took me like uh, 15 years to become a professional soccer player. And today I just, I would, I would like to talk about the, those both sides because at one side I can talk about the opportunities of blockchain, of cryptocurrency, what comes with it. And at the, and at the other hand, I see the, the perspective of a football player when it comes to sport. You mentioned African players in your team. Can you maybe explain the path to playing in Europe? Okay. So it's, it's kind of difficult to say because there is not just one way to go. You got like a hundred possible ways to come into a professional soccer or football. But in Africa, it's, it's many times it's like you're a good player, you're a young player, and there is an agent who finds you and he brings you the opportunities. And at the end, the business in the moment isn't that equal for every, everybody. Because sometimes uh, you got many players who, who are high quality players, but they don't have the reasons. They don't have the connections to get their feet into the professional, into Europe, to, to have the connections to the players agencies, to the... To the, to the business at the end. And I think that's, that's a big, big, big fortune of blockchain because at the end with the blockchain technology we got, we, can, uh, we don't need a middleman like an agent. We don't need somebody who brings a young player who don't have the reasons by himself, bring the money, bring the opportunities because with the blockchain technology, he could or he can create the opportunity by himself. Since you're an athlete and crypto consultant, can you give us a unique perspective on sports and blockchain as you can cover, of course, both sides? So when I think about blockchain in sports and when I saw the first time the Sportico investment platform, I, I was really like, wow, this, this is it or this could be the one of the, the biggest opportunities for sports. I really started realizing that blockchain and sport will come together one day. We saw the digitalization the last five to 10 years ago and like, like everything, the sports business also went digital. 
And at the end, I think the next digital step is blockchain. And so if I think about the digitalization of the sports industry, blockchain has to come because it will be much easier. It will be much, it, it will cost uh, much less. If I think, if I think I did it all as a, as a businessman, I think you can take many, many steps out of it because in sports business, you got like, like in the financial area, you got always a middleman. And with blockchain, you empower the people to don't have this middleman between two individuals. And in my opinion, blockchain will not only take over in, in football, in the football industry, I think blockchain will digitalize the whole sports industry in five to 10 years, in my opinion. Can blockchain bring more equality into sports? I think Sportikog is at one on the on the investor sides, they bring them the opportunity to invest into the sports business. What that wasn't really uh, literally that wasn't there before Sportico. At the other side, you got the young athletes as me. Uh, if they need the financial help or if they need like uh, s s capital to start. If I if I think about sports, it isn't it isn't like uh, just football. I'm coming from the football business. It's it's literally a, a little bit different. But if I think about uh, people that uh, that are doing s ski ra sky race, ski race, at the example for an example, it's it's like much. You got a much more financial help to get into the professional area than in football, for an example. And for guys like this, for guys like uh, my friend Nikki, who I know personally, the Sportico platform is a, is a very, very well opportunity to get these financial helps together. And for investors, you can invest into a young sportsman and get something back if he becomes successful. Do you see investing in athletes a good investment opportunity? I think yes, because investing into someone, we always say you don't invest into a project, you invest into people. So in sports, it's like the same. You invest into people because you believe in them, because you believe they can be successful. And I think if I take a look at investing in people, it's always the same. It doesn't matter if it's in a sportsman or in a businessman. You invest your money into the people and not into projects. So I'm absolutely fine with uh, that kind of uh, investment. And we also have some questions from our viewers. You are seeing increased interest in blockchain among athletes uh, like your own team members? It's, it's more like they, they're just, uh, they don't interest much into blockchain. They're much, they, they're like chasing the hype a little bit. So it's like somebody made money with Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies and from one day to another, everyone wants to know about Bitcoin, about about cryptocurrency. But the problem is mostly they don't go a step deeper in it. They don't really understand how this, uh, how blockchain works, how this whole industry works, or this uh, what 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 is what really is it at the end? I think like the. People or the, also the footballers, they are interested into Bitcoin, into Ethereum, but they don't have really the knowledge about it at the moment. And I think that's, that's a great opportunity for me too, to show them what is really behind the hype. Because I think from, from my view, the, the, the philosophy behind Bitcoin is, is much more valuable than the hype we've seen uh, the last year until uh, December. And what is behind all the hype? <laughs> I, think, I think behind the hype, I see like Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies from two, two sides, because Bitcoin, in my opinion, is a, is a global uh, test, you can say. It's, 
the first time you got the digital money without banks. So it's a project, in my opinion. And the decentralized applications such as uh, Ethereum or Ethereum-based applications, we don't really can uh, put both together because Bitcoin is a global project and Bitcoin can fail, but it don't has to fail. But I think what, what really will stay is the blockchain. So that means that our decentralized applications, that are blockchain solutions, and at the end, the thing that has to come in the next years are at one side, definitely people who create something about this, about this technology behind the hype, behind Bitcoin. And at the other side, we have to create acceptance points. So that means somewhere where this technology really can be used. Diego, thank you for being with us today and all the best in the finish of the football season. Yeah, we got like three, three more games to go. Thanks to you. Have a nice day.